Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm going to talk about Julia, uh, which is an intermediate representation or an intermediate language for Ethereum contracts. Um, you know, let's just first see what are the problems. Why would we need a new language? Or am I just crazy that we need a new language? Um, in fact, we do have a couple of problems. And most of these problems are actually related to the Solidity compiler itself. Um, the first problem is, you know, auditing contracts written in Solidity is not that simple. I will explain that in a bit. Then the Solidity compiler is written in C++. And a lot of things, a lot of helpers, a lot of code generators are, of course, written in C++. And they are quite complex. And, you know, with time, they can become even more complex as more features are added. The next problem is optimizations, you know, different optimization steps on the compilation. That can become very complex as well. This one so far hasn't been an issue because Solidity can only output EVM bytecode. But, you know, in the future, uh, future, we might move on to new virtual machines. So one such virtual machine is called EVM 1.5, and that one is called eWASM. In the current state of Solidity, that would be a quite big change to rewrite the compiler supporting any of those. And lastly, creating DSLs or domain-specific languages, it, it doesn't really exist at the moment. And the most practical way to do that is to compile your domain-specific language to Solidity or to Serpent. And by doing that, you will be exposed to the very same problems Solidity is exposed to. So this is one of the examples for auditing, right? There are multiple parts to auditing. First of all, one needs to make sure that the contract written in Solidity does what a functional specification says. In this case, the intention was to being able to redeem the money once. But I don't think the contract does that. The second problem with auditing, which might not be done in every single case, is verifying that the compiler creates bytecode accordingly to the source code. So there are two examples there. The top one is a assembly call in functional um, representation, so functional inline assembly. Um, and there you see four variables and the call. That is quite readable. In the bottom, there is the EVM bytecode counterpart. And it doesn't really look readable. The tone of swaps and dupes. The reason for that is, in Solidity, every variable is, has a life cycle of existence until the end of the block. So in that case there, they still exist after the call. So they have to be kept on the stack. And therefore, we need to swap them around, and we need to make duplications of them. I guess you can agree that it's quite hard to verify that even bytecode uh, actually corresponds to that assembly. And these are, this is one example for helpers. Um, this actually is the code for pushing a value to an array. First, we retrieve the length. We increase the length of the array. And we resize it. Then we get the reference. In this example, we get the reference of a storage slot and a storage offset. And then finally, we can interact uh, with that array. So there must be a way to improve this. Um, let's just take a step back and look at other compilers uh, you know, outside of the Ethereum. Um, so basically, for many years, compilers, traditional compilers, have been working in different stages. The first stage is the front end, which parses the source code, does uh, analysis, checks several things, and finally creates an intermediate representation of the program. The next stage is the middle end, which can apply different optimizations on the, front, uh, on the intermediate representation. And the last one is the back end, of course, which generates bytecode for the target machine. And again, it can do optimizations there. Compared to that, Solidity only has two stages, or more like 1.5 stages. There's one stage which does everything, and there's another one which optimizes EVM bytecode. And this stage has no idea uh, what the source code was. Now, introducing an intermediate language will change it to how all, the old, how all the other compilers work. 
However, there is a big difference because the reason most compilers work that way is they target multiple machines. So if you look at GCC or LLVM, they support a like C, and you can compile the same C code to multiple computers. And with compiler toolkits, they also support multiple languages on the input side, and they can utilize the same backend written. Of course, this applies to Solidity, but the main reason uh, this makes sense for Solidity is verification of what happens within the compiler. Well, actually, I just said these there. And yeah, like the, the last point, even your bytecode, um, since this intermediate representation, this language, by definition has to be a much simpler language than Solidity is. And that, of course, means the bytecode generation of it should be much more simple. So what does the language look like? Uh, here's a simple contract. It just returns a string. And this is an incomplete example of that contract in Julia. The important part is the one highlighted on the top. So you create the, if you look at the string, that string is encoded there in hexadecimal. It is assigned to a variable. It is ABI encoded into memory, and that memory is returned. The part on the bottom is you know, a helper, a compiler real output into the contracts. What that helper does is it receives uh, control when the contract is called, and it decides which function within the contract should be executed. Or in the case none of them matched, it just ensures that the contract hasn't received any money. And you can extend this with the missing parts, because you see there's an ABI encode string Ensure no way you transfer extra call signature. So these are in this slide. Of course, not, not all of them are implemented, um, but you can see they're fairly simple. These are all helpers which will be outputted into each of the contracts, and that happens already, but all of this is written in C and is hidden from the eye. There's one thing which one can notice here extra call signature is a one liner. That's why optimizations make sense. This one should be in line. It shouldn't be a function call. It should be just uh, those few instructions. Now, here's the, the helper you have seen. And here's a possible way to write it in Julia. I think it's much more readable. So you know, by moving most of the compiler into Julia from C++ gives us a couple of benefits. It should help auditing efforts because one can just review this much more simple language, Julia, and all the helpers written in them, as opposed to finding someone who's happy to review C++. I mean, I wouldn't want to review C++. And it also allows a simple framework for optimizations, because basically, here you will just optimize Julia code. Right now, if you want to optimize contracts, you should also do optimization steps in Solidity, in the Solidity part, before it gets converted to EVM. And in fact, we only have one single, tiny, simple optimization step in Solidity. Everything else is in EVM. And you know, if we have all these helpers written in Julia, and they are verified, they could be used by other languages as well in the ecosystem. So wh where do we stand right now? Julia, I guess, looked familiar to those who use Solidity, because it looked kind of like the inline assembly Solidity has. And that's, of course, because it is an evolutionary step from inline assembly. <clears throat> so inline assembly was introduced last year. Uh, it supported jumps, instructions, and functional instructions. But over time, we have restricted that. Uh, we removed the you know, more risky parts. And we added a couple of new features, like functions, for loops, switch statements. And yeah. OK, so one question there, I guess those people doing uh, Serpent or Viper would ask, why not do it with LLL? Because LLL exists. And Serpent actually used LLL as an intermediate language. So the two main reasons is LLL is really based on EVM. It's based on the EVM opcodes. It has a couple of extensions on top, but it really is just uh, EVM assembly in a Lisp-like language. 
And of course, we had this organic evolution of inline assembly, which was already used. So the language features we have, we have variables, which can be typed. Well, in fact, there's Julia, which is the intermediate language that must be typed. And then we have inline assembly, which you can already use, that is not typed. We have functions with statements. Um, and I guess soon we will have an if statement as well, without any else condition. Um, and we have four loops. Then the important part, we don't have instructions. EVM opcodes behave just like functions. They're not a separate kind of uh, uh, expression. So variables and functions, they uh, support multiple assignment. They are initialized to the default value of 0. And functions can have multiple inputs and multiple outputs. So here, here are a couple of examples. On the top, you just have a sim simple excitement. If there's no value specified, it is assigned uh, as 0. Um, oh, actually, the third line is invalid. Uh, I just uh, missed to mark it. Uh, because the right hand side has to be a single expression. It cannot be a tuple expression. And, and that is a simple function, and that's how you call it. Now, the switch statement is the core of uh, the entire language. Uh, it can have multiple cases. It can have a default value. Um, at least one case, either a specified case or the default case, has to be present. One major difference here for anyone uh, used to normal languages is a switch statement would support fall true, and you would have a keyboard break to stop at any given point of time. Now, Julia doesn't have that. Every part of a switch statement will be executed entirely. There's no break, and there's no fall true. That's a very important thing, but it might not look uh, obvious from these examples. So basically, how this gets compiled into bytecode is in EVM, it will do a couple of comparisons. Does it equal 0? If not, do that. Does it equal 0? Does it equal 1? Does it equal those? If not, else. And the last feature we have is for loops, which has an initializer, has a, a condition, has a post block and a block. Now, one interesting part here is in an initializer, so actually, all the blocks, initializer, block, and post block, they are the same scope. So any variable created in the initializer is valid in the for loop, but is not valid outside. It does support break. A couple of examples. OK. So we do actually have different backends in Solidity for Julia. Uh, right now, EVM, the normal EVM we have, is, is of course working. And we have EVM 1.5 implemented. The interesting part about EVM 1.5 is that it supports uh, basically functions and st uh, stack frames. Um, so it's, you know, that's the main improvement. Um, what it means, we can really easily translate Julia functions into EVM 1.5 functions. And that makes it really easy to verify. Uh, Ewasm is a different backend, which is in progress. It already works, but it's not finished. Uh, so it's not really part of the tree yet. Now, the last backend I think possible is even doing a JavaScript backend. The use case there would be someone is writing you know, more, more parts of the application, the DAP, in Solidity. Right now, you have to only write the, the on-chain part in Solidity. But you could, in the future, uh, write off-chain parts in Solidity and compile those parts into JavaScript. Um, if anyone volunteers, I'm happy to help to get that back and done. Um, and we already have a tiny bit of third-party support uh, for Julia. There is a Julia interpreter in LAM, and that's the URL for it. I think it was written in less than a week. So that probably shows that the language is quite simple to deal with. Um, I did a toy LLL to Julia compiler just to see you know, how much effort would it take. It takes a couple of hours to write that, even less if you have a parser ready. And then lastly, you know, with Julia, it should be easy enough to create domain-specific languages. Because 
Julia is quite low level, but at the same time, it does have a lot of convenient features like functions and switch statements. Um, that is actually an example of compiling uh, LLL to Julia. And as you can see, most of those parts entirely resemble the LLL counterparts. And this also highlights the need for optimizations because the first step in using Julia, converting from any language to Julia, is to be able to ensure the code is correct. So it will be verbose. There won't be any optimization at that level. And the next step, one can apply simple optimization step by step. So in this case here, I would want the LLL to Julia compiler to output this code, but it, it's not really optimized. So as the next step, I would want an optimizer to inline a node. So below get owner wouldn't call node, it would just have call data, um, as call data load as an instruction. So that's just an overview of what happened in the last couple of months regarding Solidity and Julia. Um, and as you can see, in point 12, we have released support for functions, for loops. And point 17, which was recently, we added support for a new ABI encoder. So many people who were complaining the lack of support for structs, that new ABI encoder enables support for passing structs between functions. Now, that's already in the compiler, but it has to be enabled by a special experimental switch um, because you know, we're, not, we're not really confident yet that it should be used in production. But if someone wants to try out it, it's certainly possible. Hopefully, in the next release, we will have a new ABI decoder merged at the same time. And that will enable functions to receive structs. Because right now, you can send structs, but you cannot receive structs. And then hopefully two releases from now, we will have a first version of a Solidity to Julia compiler as part of Solidity. And then in the future, you wasn't. So it can be already tried out if you dare. Those are the command line options to use the Solidity compiler to compile assembly. And you can also switch to Julia mode the only difference there is using types. Uh, and the last line is uh, changing the output machine. If you're interested in Julia or Solidity development, um, you can join the Solidity-dev channel on um, Gitter, or you can just talk to me directly at AXIC on Gitter. Thank you.